Welcome back into the shop, everybody. I am pumped. Today is an exciting day. I got up early this morning and got some help in here to get the top up off the ground, off the clamps. It looks great. The glue joint really looks nice. I've got a lot of sanding and cleanup to do on this, cutting to size. It's gonna look really, really nice in this office. This is always my favorite part of the build. When you start to see it coming together, you start to see it all happening, but there's a lot to do, so let's get started. <laughs> So I got the two sides cut to width, we're at four feet wide. I'm just gonna hit my ends now real quick. I'm just gonna double check and make sure my track is square. I don't have to be perfectly square because we're a tabletop. It doesn't really matter if you're a little off square. It's not like it's a door fitting into an opening. Um, but obviously I don't want to be way out of square. So pretty good here. I'll clamp this track on, make the cut, measure my 12 foot, and then cut the final. So there you have it. It's taken about two and a half days to get this four foot wide by 12 foot long uh, hard maple top all together and cut the size. At this point, all I have left to do is a whole bunch of sanding with the orbital. I'll probably start with 120, go 180, and then finish at 220 grit. Um, it's probably going to take me most of the day to go through and sand this and get it really nice and ready for finish, get all the edges sanded and cleaned. It would be really boring for you guys to watch that, so luckily you can skip right through it. Okay, so I'm going to be using this uh, jig alongside the bushing in my router and this upcut spiral bit. It's a half inch bit. Um, the, the bushing will ride in here on my jig and it gives it about a quarter inch step, um, which you'll see here in a second when I do this. This hole is going to be for cord management on the table so they can run a uh, phone system or whatever they need uh, for conferences. So my initial cut with the router is a real light pass and just, just kind of establishes a line that I can follow with my saw blade. I use my drill to uh, drill holes to access the blade into the material that way I can cut out the waste with my jigsaw. So now I come back with my router using the same bushing and jig uh, to clean up those saw cuts and it just leaves a really nice uh, quarter inch ledge all around the board. Good morning everybody. It is about 6.30 in the morning and I look about, about like I crawled out of bed which is pretty much what I did. Uh, I've got a busy day today, so I want to get an early start also trying to beat the heat, which I don't think is possible because I'm sweating already. It feels really hot in here. Uh, we're on day four of this conference table build. Today I've got to finish sanding the top. I've got the little wire access panel that we started yesterday. I've got to build the top for that. Got some quarter sawn maple here for that. So we got a, a lot to do so that I can get this thing delivered tomorrow and installed. Um, so let's get started. Also, go get yourself a Third Coast Craftsman t-shirt. 
You should also head over and subscribe to Chris's channel. Super cool channel. Does some really interesting stuff. It's fairly new, so go over there and give him some support. <laughs> All right, so I'm off to a bit of a rough start this morning, unfortunately. My main camera that I shoot with, my Panasonic, it's totally toast. I don't know why it won't, it won't turn on. It says, lens attachment failed. Go figure, good timing. So I'm on the GoPro now for the rest of this video. Uh, hopefully the quality stays somewhat okay. <laughs> Let's give that a shot. You'll notice I flipped it. Uh, it's because I've got a slight bevel I'm, I'm cutting on this edge and I had it flipped upside down for the bevel I wanted. That's much better. I think that fit is really pretty good. It's humid in here, so I would expect it to... Nah, we may be a little, a little too tight. Let's just hit a little, little bit more off. slight tap on all four sides hopefully that's what we need to get this right it's beautiful so now this piece is thick so I've got a lot of material I can't hand I can't run this through the planer it's too small so now I'm gonna have to hand plane that flush so that's gonna be a little bit of work okay in order to do this I'll start with my scrub plane gonna have to turn around and go the other way there we go got a bit of a grain issue there you gotta be real careful that i do not hit the table this is such a heavy cut it's hard to control i'm gonna take the blade back a little here Switching over to a, a four, my four and a half. This one's set for a fairly heavy cut. But I'm, if I hit the table with this plane, it's okay. I'm not gonna gouge it like I would a scrub plane. Pops right out. Pops right in. Do a little sanding now and then i've got to cut a little finger pull for it that'll look pretty cool here's the thing i really don't buy nice stuff this is the nicest camera i've ever owned it cost me about 900 dollars with the lens and the body it's been a very good camera but the reason i don't buy nice stuff is because i tend to break it i don't go easy on things this thing has gotten covered in dust it's gotten dropped a couple times and I'm surprised at how well it's held up. 
That's why I drive an old truck. I have an old 2000, I think it's 2008 Tundra. It's, you have to pull a cable with your finger to open the door. I mean, I just don't need nice things. I don't really care to have nice things. I break everything. So I like to make nice things, but I don't need nice things. Okay, the last quick order of business before we shoot finish is to put a little round di half diameter or half diameter, half round uh, circle in this. So we have a place for cords to come through. Um, I'm gonna use, what am I gonna use? Oh, I'm gonna use a Forstner bit and just drill it out. Now you can see that that uh, you got a little spot there for cords to come through. You can get your finger in here and pop that out. This little bit here, this little inside edge that you can see, I'm going to take that out now uh, with my handsaw so that's not in the way of the, gets a little more room for the cords. This is not the easiest cut to make. Get started is the trick. Just kind of a look at what we got that should open up. There you go. Nice cool hole. You don't see that ledge. Plenty of room for cords to drop in there. Okay, so for the finish, I'm shooting a Sherwin Williams cab acrylic lacquer. Uh, it's the idea with this finish is that it's non-yellowing, and so with the maple, we'll hopefully keep that nice white color. Uh, this first coat I'm laying down here is a sealer. We got to put on a, I think it's a vinyl sealer, uh, before we can shoot the lacquer. The trick here is just making sure I get good overlapping coats um, and get a nice thick layer of finish laid down. So I'll spray a total of, I'll, I'll spray the one coat of sealer and then three coats of lacquer over that. Um, in between those coats I'm sanding uh, anywhere from 320 up to like 600 grit. Okay, so it's been a long day. It is about nine o'clock. I finally got the finish all done on this. I just got done kind of buffing it out with some steel wool. I'll probably put a little wax on it in the morning, kind of even the sheen. It's a really challenging to spray 12 feet by four feet and get a good even coat laid down. I feel like I got it pretty good here. I'm pretty happy with the results. The little uh, cord access looks nice. It's a little tight after getting finish on it, uh, but hopefully once we put it in the climate control building that will all change. So that's that's it for the day. We're going to get up in the morning and get this thing installed and delivered. All right, it is Day, day five of this conference table building. Really got the trailer all hooked up and we are headed into San Antonio. Got my buddy Steven to come over to help today. Super nice of him. He is also a furniture maker out in this area. So I got word yesterday that this table is going on the second story, uh, almost like a loft of this little office complex. Uh, so this should be pretty interesting delivery install. We got to take it up a flight of stairs, so. We have several guys there helping out. Uh, should be interesting, should be fun.
So we finally got the table uh, into the room. It looked great. It's a cool spot for the table. Uh, we got the wires run up the bottom um, through the tubing and underneath the table. Super easy. Uh, everything worked out great. The, the access looks awesome. Everything set up really nice uh, and Valcor was really pleased with it. Okay, so that uh, wraps it up guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this two-part series on this maple conference table. It was so much fun to build. A ton of work though. It really, really wore me out. Uh, thanks to Steven for helping me install it. Thanks to Valcor for ordering it. So we got some really cool projects coming up. I'm going to be building a 10 by 10 by 10 uh, Rift Song White Oak veneered box. I'm actually really excited to build this. It's going to be a challenging little project. It's also really fun because it's tiny and I can pick it up easily. I don't have to haul around a 12 foot by 4 foot table, which has really worn me out. I want to show you these real quick. These are over here if I can get them in focus. These are four maple benches that are going in the same room as the conference table we just built. Got to get those knocked out and get those delivered this week. Uh, but as usual, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, go subscribe to the channel. You can also support the channel by uh, purchasing merchandise at BunkerBranding.com. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.